Welcome back. Previously, what we have covered is simple linear regression with the Boston housing data set.、Uh, we perform robust regression as well as evaluate the model performance. In this video, we are going to go through an expansion of the linear regression model. We're going to move into multiple regression. Now, simple linear regression. Is linear regression with univariate, meaning single feature to explain our target variable. Now that we move into multiple regression, in essence, what we are looking at is multiple features to predict the target variable. Now let's start with this multiple regressions.、Uh, this is what is really familiar to those who have been through either high school or university or graduate level. Uh, statistics. This is the basic formula of y being your target variable. Beta zero is your intercept. Beta one is your coefficient, and x being your target variable. So this is a simple linear regression with univariate. Now, as you start working with multiple regression, then you start looking at with x one, x two, and on and on it goes. That will be what it looks like. So the first line here is. Simple linear regression. The second line here will be multiple linear regression. In the examples that we did with the Boston housing、uh, price prediction,、um, we were doing or modeling mostly with simple linear regression. Now, the one time that we did multiple、uh, linear regression was towards the end, whereby we use everything, okay, everything in our model、uh, to actually conduct our so-called、uh, modeling. A process. So that's really at this part, whereby we use、um, everything. So this part here, basically,、uh, we actually use everything to conduct our linear regression. So that's where the performance evaluation、um, we actually did perform the multiple regression. But I didn't really go into a deep explanation of it. So this is what this video is really for. Now, multiple linear regression is a well-studied field in statistics. Now, our focus will be on what is relevant for data science, which the pre predominant focus is in practical, and really what's relevant for prediction. Statistics、uh, has a slightly different focus, which is in the、um, so-called the coefficient, the robustness of it, and the biasness, and the rest of it. So let's start with this. A、uh, couple of things we wanted to import is your NumPy, your pandas,、uh, matplotlib for visualization. I've added a new line here that I haven't explained so far. As、uh, rather than plt dot show, I'm going to add this. So every time when we actually do plot something, it will just、uh, get plotted within、uh, the Jupyter notebook itself. Now the other thing is that the last time what we did do is that we downloaded or provided the datasets in the folder and the zip file for you. Uh, so that you can actually start playing around with the Boston housing. Now, within Psychic Learn, the same datasets is also available. So I just want to show you a different way to actually load the data. So from Psychic Learn datasets, we import load Boston,、uh, and we store the load Boston into Boston data, and we convert the Boston、uh, Boston data dot data,、uh, and adding the column. Name, which is the features name, into the data frame,、uh, basically converted to a data frame before storing it into the variable variable called df. So if I print that out, this look should look、uh, quite familiar to you, with one exception. What is the exception? The exception is that you don't see the medium house price value here. So in essence, this is a feature matrix,、uh, features matrix that we talked about last time. Let's look at the number of data. We have 506 rows of data and 13. Basically, the 13 is across、uh, the columns, and we storing the so-called all of these into x. X will be our feature matrix, and the target variable we store it in y. So let's just print y out so that you can actually see why it looks like.、Um, this is basically our median house price value. Okay, so we have got the data loading and、um, basically preparation、uh, ready to go. Now, rather than using Scikit-Learn、uh, in this lesson, I'm going to use the stats models、uh, that is provided for uh, in uh, the Python library. Let me pull that up across to show you. Here it is. 
The stats model is uh, really for um, statistical modeling, and there are actually a lot of uh, stats tests that you can actually perform within this, and as well as statistical data exploration. So um, we're going to make use of this. I just want to point you to this so that you uh, know where to look for it if, should you want to actually conduct more uh, so-called uh, statistical analysis. So let me move this away. Right, so there are two parts here that we are importing. First is the statsmodels.api. We, uh, we're storing that as SM or importing as SM. The next one is the statsmodel.formula.api as SMF. We'll go through that, make use of that uh, a bit later. Let me just remove that. Okay, so there's a slight difference uh, in the way that stats model, how it's actually uh, created is the construction is a little bit different from psychic learn. Um, you do need to add an extra constant term uh, simply to allow the bias to be estimated uh, on, on itself, meaning standalone. Otherwise, the bias terms or the intercepts will be incorporated into your uh, coefficient estimation. So your coefficient will be, um, will be incorporated. So we want to actually segregate that out so that we actually have a, a clear uh, constant term on its own here. As you can see here um, again I won't run this out if you want to actually have a look at how um, stats model called the ordinary least square library just uh, run this out it will show you how or what are the actual input parameters you need to provide here we are running the sm uh, dot ols which is the ordinary least square and providing the target variable as well as the x constant that we created here and we instantiate and also fit our model so the fitting part is done here we're storing it to the lr and we'll run the lr stands for linear regression so once you run this notice that there are a lot of information uh, that is generated uh, this is pretty typical of uh, stats where you have the ordinary least square regression results here and then you have the coefficient estimates, which is along this line, and the standard error, and then the t-test as well as the p-value, and some more residual uh, stats that's been provided here. So let me walk through these one by one because these are really important, uh, especially in the field of statistics and multiple uh, regression. A couple of things. There are a lot of uh, stats tests and information here. These are mostly for stats analysis you don't really need all of these for data science but it's good to know let me just correct that typo there uh, again i mentioned before data science focus is really on prediction and having a model that works on predicting real data or unseen data it is not concerned as much with the correct specification of statistical problems okay uh, these are all the descriptors to explain to you what each and every one of these fields are. Um, the dependent variable uh, really is the target variable. In our case, is the median house price value, so it's provided here as y. The model that we're using here is ordinary least squares. The method of achieving the estimates, uh, coefficient estimation, is using least square method, which is the standard method. Um, so the number of observations is provided for, uh, is printed out, the degree of freedom in terms of the residuals. This is calculated by taking the number of observations less the number of parameters that you use to estimate. And the degree of freedom of the model really is the number of estimated parameters in the model. So here we have the model itself is 13. The degree of freedom of the residuals is the number of observations less the number of parameters you use to estimate the model itself. Couple other things, R squared, this is the coefficient of determinations and it measures the goodness of fit. fit. Um, I won't go through these uh, in detail. In essence, uh, it's basically telling you how much your model is and I can explain the variability of the underlying data itself. The adjusted R squared is something that you will use. I haven't mentioned that earlier in our previous uh, lessons because typically adjusted R squares is only used in uh, multiple regression, um, not in linear regression. Now the adjusted R-square is used uh, and make adjustment for 
uh, based on the sample size and the number of parameters used. So when you have the more parameters that you add into a model, typically the R square will go up because in some way, shape or form, the uh, so-called variability is explained by the additional parameters that you put in. But is that significant? So what adjusted R square is trying to do is it penalized um, the so-called additional parameter you put in that doesn't actually add much to the explanation of the underlying variability. So that's really uh, why where R square adjusted R square comes in, and typically it is used when you're comparing multiple regression model. Uh, the F stats tells you that whether your model is different from uh, just simple average or not. And uh, typically you read the P value of F stats uh, to see if it's below 0.05 or not. Um, in the past, 0.05 is used commonly because uh, the, you know, it's the olden days when the computational power is not very powerful. Nowadays, people will start to advocate uh, a basically uh, a value that's substantially smaller than that, such as 0.005. The last two is the Aikaki, uh, Akaiki information criterion. I'm sorry, I'm not used to reading this. I just use called AIC. Uh, this evaluate the model based on the model complexity and the number of observations. The lower the number, the better it is. And BIC is very similar to AIC, uh, except it punishes models with more parameters. Again, the smaller the number, the better it is. And by itself, it doesn't actually mean much. So these are the two uh, numbers here. That pretty much explains the first table. And you can see here the p-stats here uh, is very, very small, 10 to the power minus 135. In essence, what that's telling you is that the, uh, the model that you have is significantly different from an average model. OK, so. Um, other tests that's provided uh, the, the following table, which is this portion here. Basically, it's a long list of the coefficient uh, as well as the standard error. Um, typically, when you're reading this table, what you will look for is this p-value uh, because the coefficient by itself doesn't mean much with the standard error unless you want to manually calculate it yourself. It also doesn't mean much. T-table, you need to usually compare it against the T-table so, um, or the T-stats. You have to compare it to a T-table. Again, that's uh, very tedious. Hence, people mostly use the p-value as the way to read the significance of a number. And what you can see here is that the indus is insignificant. Uh, age is insignificant. The rest is um, significant. All right, so that's something to actually pay attention to. So indus as well as age is not significant in accordance to the number uh, associate t-test that's provided. The last column, two columns, basically is the 95 confidence interval. Uh, what is shown here is the 2.5 and also 97.5 uh, percentile. Okay, the last table provides uh, the information in as far as the residual test. Um, in statistical modeling, the residual is what's um, being paid attention to substantially, the reason being uh, from the residual after your model uh, has explained the variability of the data, what is left in terms of your residual should be random, okay, with normal distribution. And uh, if it possesses or exhibits some sort of behavioral pattern, or not so much behavioral pattern, certain patterns, it means that there are some, uh, your model has missed out on some signals. Okay, so a couple of things that you pay attention to is the omnibus. This is basically a combined stats, stats uh, statistical test for skewness and ketosis. Uh, what is skewness and ketosis? Skewness tells you whether your um, distribution of your residual is to the left or to the right. So a positive value means there's a long tail to the right. A negative value basically a long tail to the left. Ketosis measures the pickiness of your distribution. Uh, if you have a negative one, meaning it's actually flatter than normal distribution. If you have a positive one, meaning it has a high peak uh, and also extreme uh, tail. So those are the two things that you pay attention to and both indicates some problem with your models. And typically um, people either read the omnibus or the 
a Jörg Barak, um, but usually you just read the p-value of, of these two. Uh, uh, again, p-value of less than 0 0.05 indicate significance. Now here you have the p-value here is very, very um, small, meaning the significance. So there are some more patterns that's not being modeled with the uh, features that we provided here. The same, uh, Jacques Barra also indicating the same uh, problem with the model that we have. Uh, the last two figures I want to actually cover is Durban Watson. This is only useful for time series modeling. Uh, this is a test of the presence of colon correlation amongst the residuals, especially from a uh, time series modeling point of view. And the conditional number uh, is a test for multicollinearity. Anything that's greater than 30 indicates unstable results, meaning within your data, you some of your so-called explanatory factor uh, share the same variance. Or the other way to put it is that one has an impact on the other or they are correlated. Okay, the last thing that I want to cover uh, in this video is really stats models uh, dot form, formula dot API. Now, what we did do earlier is uh, in terms of the way that we model it is very similar to psychic learn. We provide the target variable, we provide the X um, without specifying the so-called formula itself. You can do it this way. This is uh, this, the way that most people are familiar with. If you come from a SAS background or R background, you just write the formula. The so-called target variable is basically uh, explained by these factors. So you can run that and print the summary. It will provide the same result as previously. That's pretty much the end of this video. Uh, what we've covered in this video really is an introduction to multiple regression and how to conduct your modeling using the stats model. And the third one that you did uh, is the actual so-called understanding of the so-called stats output itself. What I'd like you to do uh, in to do as an exercise is pause this video uh, for a couple of minutes and try to actually select a portion of this let's just say from constant all the way to rm and run your model uh, using uh, stats models and see what the generated number looks like so again until rm run it and see what it looks like so just pause the video now and try it out when you come back you can compare against what i've uh, uh, i've done and or rather the result of the exercise that i'm asking to do for you to do right now Let's pause this video. All right, welcome back. How did that go? I hope that you uh, tried that and, um, and see what it looks like. And basically it's a really interesting exercise for you to actually or try it out to see if you can actually model using these four variable. Now I cheated rather than using the um, the data frame here, what I did do is actually I used a shortcut and just used the formula as such. And when I ran it, this is my output. So I'm going to leave this uh, notebook for you to compare your results against mine. Um, and just for you to actually play around with the exercise and see um, whether your results looks exactly the same as mine or not. So um, well done for trying that out. So in essence, this video we've covered on multiple regression and we also used the stats model and uh, to actually, you know, uh, perform our stats stats and also modeling and to actually generate the actual coefficient itself. And the last thing that we did is actually use the um, formula API of stats model to actually generate the same value. So in the next video, we are going to go into looking at the different features and identifying collinearity between features and also trying to um, select features that uh, or dropping features that is irrelevant to our model and selecting features that is of high importance to our model. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.